Okay, QT50 fans, <clears throat> I've got to make, I guess, uh, I've, I've made a bunch of videos on this, and on my way I keep learning new things after I've made videos. Uh, sometimes I learn things from making mistakes, which I have here, and so, uh, and then I've, I've gotten some questions in the meantime too. So let me address uh, those questions. And then let me address uh, a mistake that you're going to see later. Um, first off, uh, someone asked, and I guess this is uh, relevant to all of this, you know, how to put a regulator on a regular QT50. Uh, you, you can find one of these. You know, this is the regulator that came on the uh, three position switch bikes. And the way it works is, and I've actually installed one of these on an older QT50 that did not come with a regulator. And this is just a regulator, it's not a regulator rectifier. Um, usually they're mounted on the other side, but I'll pop this up here so you can see. Uh, you, you can uh, actually just drill a hole in the frame like the other one was, like uh, the later models have but on the other side of the bike, or you can mount it here or wherever, uh, but probably on the other side's better. Just drill a hole in the frame slightly smaller than the hole on this, and then just screw it in. And then what you need to do is attach, see how it's got that tab on it? Well, that's for a wire. And basically, all you do is run a wire from this to the blue wire coming out of the stator. And the blue wire, I'm pretty sure, is the lighting wire. Uh, you can check your wiring diagram, but I'm 99% sure that's the wiring rider, wire. So that's how you would hook up a regular uh, QT50 uh, regulator to the system. And then I've got a, a trail tech regulator, which is probably what I'm going to go with here and just try to go with the stock rectifier. Um, this one, you just wire the brown to ground, maybe put a pigtail connector on it, and then the yellow wire you splice into the uh, same thing, the blue wire, the lighting wire on the QT50, and then you just mount somewhere. So putting on a regulator is pretty easy. And then also, uh, Nasty Nate asked me, of Nasty Nate's Garage, you know, what does the HPI ignition system do? And then I've learned some other things as well. So this system just has, uh, with the CDI that it came with, just has one timing curve. You can go to HPI's website, and I'll stick... I'll stick the link below, but you can you can actually buy. I think they're located they're located in Europe, maybe the Belgium is that right or the Netherlands? I'll have to double check. Anyhow, uh, they have another CDI with two curves. It's a, a digital CDI or something, an electronic CDI. Well, digital CDI, I think it is, and it has the two curves, and you can buy the button. Problem is, that CDI is 100 euros, plus I think there's a value added tax of 20%, plus you've got shipping, which shouldn't, should not, quote unquote, should not be too expensive, but, and then you got to buy the button, so you're probably looking at 200 bucks just to get the uh, two timing curve CDI. But anyways, I showed you this before. I'm going to try to show you this again. So, uh, so this one I look closer, and the red curve is the standard curve on this ignition. And then if you buy the the other CDI, you also get the blue curve. So. Uh, you, you'll see how it goes throughout the RPM range. So you've got, it, it initially advances 
right after, you know, uh, the, you know, early acceleration, and then it uh, the timing retards uh, after thereafter. There we go. Let's just put it right there. So. Uh, I don't know what the standard curve or if there is any curve. I don't think there is any curve on the standard stock QT50 CDI. Um, and so the HPI ignition system gives you a timing curve. And I'm sure other people can explain it better than I can, but the basic idea is One way to explain it, and there, there are other points, but I'll just start this way. Uh, whenever you performance modify, uh, especially a QT50, your biggest enemy is heat. You know, heat will kill your engine. So you're always fighting heat. And uh, so one of the benefits of the of timing curve is it fights heat. Uh, uh, in that usually as you're getting to higher and higher RPMs, like around 10, 9, 10,000, uh, your engine's building more and more heat. And if it overheats, you're going to have a soft seize. And you want to try to avoid that. So over the years, I've learned many ways to combat heat. Um, and a, a timing curve is one of the most effective ways to do that. So as you're 4,000 RPMs, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 RPMs, you see this curve going down. And that means that you're retarding, uh, well, the CDI is retarding the timing. And uh, retarding the timing means um, the fuel air mixture is being ignited later and later in the combustion process. And what that means is uh, the later it's fired, uh, the more heat uh, is going into the pipe. So you're basically getting rid of some of that heat generated by combustion uh, into the pipe. Whereas if the combustion process starts sooner, you know, it's ignited sooner by the spark plug, more of that heat stays in the combustion chamber and stays in your engine. And then the benefit of moving this heat into the pipe is you've got pressure waves traveling in through the pipe back and forth, back and forth. And long story short, those pressure waves uh, especially during certain RPM ranges, um, pack more fuel air mixture into the combustion chamber. So the benefit of a two-stroke over a four-stroke is you can actually pack more fuel air mixture it's almost uh, you can you can pack a greater volume of fuel air mixture into the engine than the actual displacement of the engine and you know some people you know loosely refer to that as i guess a supercharging effect but you know look, you'll look at videos and say well it's not really supercharged but anyways you're you're packing more especially compared to a four stroke you're able two strokes are able to get more power for the same volume or displacement of the engine than four strokes because they can pack more fuel air mixture in. And uh, so we're, let's go back. We're, we're heating up the pipe when we retard the timing. So we're, it's got a double benefit. We're getting more heat away from the engine. It's going into the pipe. By heating up the pipe, those waves, those pressure waves, in, in the pipe actually travel faster and uh, they work better with the engine at an even higher RPM so you can raise the power band of the engine and the pipe together to a higher 
range and basically get more top end speed out of it. So I know there's plenty of stuff on the internet that wasn't the best explanation, but uh, <laughs> that's what I got, bro. It's what I got. So the curve has two benefits. Simply one, you get rid of more heat from the engine. You put that heat into the pipe. Two, the heat in the pipe speeds up the pressure waves. Three, and those pressure waves working at a faster speed work with the engine at a higher RPM so you're raising the uh, the power band of the engine to a higher RPM range which in the end gives you more speed so you kinda got the best of both worlds you're you're uh, moving more heat out of the engine and you're getting more top speed that's probably the easiest way to describe it you know I, like I said uh, I've still got a lot to learn there are probably people that can explain it better than that but that's ba the basic concept and then finally yeah we're getting wordy we're already at 11 minutes dude shut up shut up this introduction is taking the whole video uh, <laughs> alright the other thing is I learned for some reason I thought this thing rotated counterclockwise that is wrong the QT50 uh, uh, flywheel rotates clockwise so you can kind of see it there's one mark here and then down here it's harder to see there's another white mark and um, when I set this up and you'll see in our earlier video which is coming after this uh, I, there's a mark on the flywheel that you align if your engine rotates counterclockwise you align it with this one. If it rotates clockwise, you align it down with this one down here. So I messed up and aligned it with this one, and of course it wouldn't start. So I had to take it all apart, well, some of it apart, and align it with this line down here. Now it starts. Uh, so, hey, we're making progress. And then the other thing is... Um, Justin, yeah, Justin, Justin and I have been uh, going back and forth because he's already done all this, and he said, you know, one of the hardest things, and I found out myself, is um, so you got to have, you'll find this out soon. Um, your setup position is to have the piston two millimeters below top dead center, and then then you put this rotor on and align the mark on the rotor with the mark on the flywheel. But then the tricky part is <coughs> tightening this down without moving the piston, without moving the alignment of the uh, rotor and the stator plate. <coughs> and so that can drive you insane. But luckily, in my younger days, <coughs> I used to uh, enjoy working on mountain bikes. <coughs> Sorry, I got a scratchy throat. And I was looking, I saved all those tools because they were expensive as all get out. And the, I think bike tools still are pretty expensive. Uh, luckily, I had this park uh, wrench. I don't know if this is a headset wrench or bottom bracket wrench or what it is, but it's a park HCW6. And the beautiful thing is this end is 32 millimeters. Why is that beautiful? Because you can, it fits perfectly to that flywheel nut. And so this is the answer to all your prayers because uh, basically when you get this on, you want to hold this dead still as you tighten on the flywheel nut so that all your adjustments pretty much stay where they are. Now, um, don't get too, you want to be as close as you can, but that's hard to do with this. And so, uh, even if you're a little off, you can loosen the uh, screws holding on the stator plate and then rotate the stator plate for your final adjustment. Uh, the other issue is, you still want to hold this still. So let's say, you know, I line it up and I'm just like a little bit 
a, a millimeter counterclockwise of the marks lining up over here. There you go. So you can see that mark. So this this uh, rotor has a mass to it, and if it's in a certain position, it'll want to, especially with the head off, it'll want to kind of just rotate on its own. So you'll go, okay, I'm a millimeter off, and you'll look away, and you'll look back in a second, and all of a sudden this is turned three millimeters off. It's like, what happened? You know, I don't know what happened. It moved by itself. There's, you know, what's going on? Well, uh, this has, uh, with the head on, there's enough compression to kind of hold it in place, but with the head off, and it's the way I do it, uh, there's not enough compression to kind of hold it in place, and it'll just, just kind of like twist on its own, you know, and kind of find its own level. And so uh, you either want to hold it steady while you're getting your, your stuff ready, uh, your, your screwdriver out to basically loosen this and adjust it, or you want to just make a mental note, okay, I'm a millimeter off, I need to move the stator plate counterclockwise a millimeter to line them up. But... Uh, that's what's going on there. So I've blah, blah, blah enough. <laughs> this will probably become its own video, and then I'll get into the installation process uh, on the video after this. So, yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Uh, I've been learning a lot, and uh, I'll go out. You won't see this till maybe a few days, a couple days later, but... Hopefully I can get it started and keep it running. Uh, I just kind of did some starts in here last night. And uh, it would start up and shut off. I didn't have the uh, gas flowing. I had the gas, the pet cot shut off. But I just wanted to see if it would start. And I guess the other issue is, real quick and then I'll end. I promise I'll shut up after this. I know I'm driving you guys nuts. Uh, this rotor as I showed you in the introductory video, I compared it with the stock QT50 flywheel, and this has considerably less mass to it. So, I can link to it in the description below. Uh, you can actually buy uh, a disc, basically, a weight that must screw into these holes or something that they've already got going on and add more mass to this. Uh, because what happens with compression, uh, you know, when you have the head on your kickstarting it, uh, it's kind of like a lawnmower that the flywheel key is broken on. You pull it and it just jerks your arm back. And uh, this is not quite the same, but anyways, you'll notice when, when uh, or I noticed when I went to kickstart it and it's under compression that you know, the kickstarter will kind of fight you. And that's because there's not... Uh, enough mass on this flywheel. I may have to order another part, who knows, or I think another, someone had mentioned going to even stiffer clutch springs to kind of combat that, and I may have those, or I may have to order them. So, uh, you know, there you go. I'll stop now. Stay tuned for more videos.